vehicles will exist for a certain purpose with limited range and where the issue of range anxiety is accepted by those customers. But this technology at the end will never make it into the mass market where people are replacing Cobalts and Malibus with vault type vehicle and say I get all the functionality and no compromises. So it just I have to put it into perspective because many things you see are in EV space and but we have to be aware that this is a very limited potential when you look at the true relevance in all the markets. Will the all electric range be the same at the beginning and end of life yeah, of the when, battery? Yes, when we talk when we talk about like achieving 40 miles and doing this as an engineer, you always talk about the capability at the end, at the 10 years end, end of life capability. Now, batteries will always show a certain degradation over time, cannot be, avo cannot be avoided. But when we talk about the capability, always we talk about at the end of life. But which does not mean that you see more in the beginning. It only means that we want to achieve a very consistent behavior between year one and year 10 so that you don't see and deal with any major degradation. You may change the band. But you do many things just okay. to achieve that consistency okay. because people would never understand why the car is behaving different in year one and year mm -hmm. Just to finish the thought here on the technology, here comes the comparison to typical appliances in your, in your household. And what you see, adding a vault to your household uh, from, from the consumption side means basically the refrigerators and freezers that are typically run in, 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 in US households <coughs> have a similar consumption than a vault in the household. The difference is for the vault you can expect that the off-peak rates that you get from your utility because you are charging, uh, uh, in the majority of times you will charge the car at night, that this is adding a little bit more than 10% to your monthly electricity bill. And so for many people it is a surprise that it is not more. Intuitively some people thought it's all to drive, and this is a person that drives 15,000 miles per year electrically. So they say, oh, I would have thought it has a bigger impact to my household consumption. And this is also one of the reasons why we say you can, the capacity in the grid can absorb millions of electric vehicles before you have to make adjustments actually to the grid capacity. What it also means when you look at the benefits for the consumer, charging a vehicle at night is is really cheap. It means a, a single charge might be depending on where you live and whether you are charging the day and the night. It's between 50 and 80 cents. I even can create a case where a person in Detroit is charging at night and is using off-peak rates. This number goes down to almost 20 cents per charge for 40 miles electric driving. So electric driving is cost-wise a fraction of what you have to pay uh, for gasoline. Just to give you some rough ideas, a person who is driving 15,000 miles is replacing 500 gallons of gasoline and is annually saving 15, now it depends always where the fuel price is, but it is between 1,200 and 1,500 dollars uh, annual saving for that person. Last comment I'd like to make is some people might say, how about the overall position? How how will the acceptance be for electric propulsion in the market and how will consumers, do consumers want electric driving? And said, many people will be surprised not only about the green aspects of the car, it is clear that this is providing independence from petroleum, it is emission free, it is making no noise. I think this is the obvious story. But the next stage in understanding on the consumer side will be that electric propulsion is opening up a new dimension in driving refinement and driving experience. And probably, I don't know how many of you have driven pure electric vehicles, but what you see is the electric propulsion system almost enables what we as engineers always were looking for in the last 50 years. It is just enabling that refinement where you have torque at zero RPM, you just get that sheer acceleration and no noise with it. Uh, it is a thing that you are, maybe some of it you have seen in very luxurious vehicles with very large combustion engines where the noise was isolated and you had large engines to generate. You will see that in that car. That launch feeling that is, is something that people have not expected. Now when you look back at ecological vehicles and how they were positioned, I think in the past being environmentally friendly was always connected to a sacrifice or you have to give something up. We were working with gear ratios and acceleration and elasticity to really improve the fuel efficiency. 
the vault is fundamentally breaking that paradigm because you can create all the environmental benefits and still get the fun to drive element in this car. The car is 150 horsepower and the torque that is built up in the electric machine is equal to a 250 horsepower V6 engine. This is how it feels to drive a vault but without noise. So I, I compare this a little bit like this, it's like flying. It, it is, the experience is completely different. Now, this is a piece customers will learn and will be surprised about. Uh, we also expect there won't be a single customer that is not test driving the vault before, before you actually purchase it. Um, uh, and I give you just some feedback what's happening. We have currently new cars driving on our proving grounds and on, and, and on the test tracks. And we do this since a couple of weeks with production intent components. So we have vehicles driving around that have the real components that finally will go into production. And then when, and as you can imagine, many of our senior dealers have an interest to drive those cars and, ex and get a first-hand experience how those, how those vehicles behave. And then what you observe, because they have been trained over the last decades almost to judge vehicles, and then you see this, it takes you just almost 30 seconds and you get out of this parking lot and you drive this car and then you see this initial smile about how those vehicles are performing. And it is something that we were never able to achieve with traditional technology. And this is, at the end, why people say it is the technology of the future. Electrification is more than just being independent from petroleum. And therefore, also we positioned the vault rather on the sportier side because we want to make that transition from a conventional car into the vault as easy as possible. And you don't have to do much rational explanation. This is how you save. The whole package, when you buy finally a vault, should something where you, it is, it is harmony from the design to the vehicle performance to the efficiency and also to the uh, overall affordability of that car. So this is the philosophy behind it. By the way, the reason why we have chosen the Chevrolet brand for the vault is also an explanation that this is not like premium technology, unaffordable. The idea is broad wide appeal, large customer groups, uh, uh, and making this, this technology accessible. Okay. okay. All right, thanks, Frank. Uh, folks, uh, if you wanted to grab some more food or drink, and uh, we have our subject matter experts here to answer your questions, feel free to...